But let's talk about wealth creation. And wealth creation is, you know, it's a cliche, isn't it? Wealth creation. Even a young young came up with a policy for the country called the Blueprint for uh, Poverty Eradication and Wealth Creation, okay, with Kibaki. Wealth creation, what is, all, what is it all about? We have invited Christian Murege, who is the head of asset management at Stanbic Bank, Kenya, to teach us more about it. Christian, good morning. Good morning, Latif. How are you doing? I'm keeping well. Yourself? I'm keeping well as well. Great. Yeah, but uh, with more money, I'd be much better. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're here today. Yeah, if I sat back and I knew that, for example, I'm worth 5 billion shillings, I can buy a couple of hotels here and there, <laughs> I'd be happier. <laughs> I'd be happier. <laughs> but Karibu sana. Thank you. Uh, City will welcome you with the day's proverb. Um, <laughs> City, the proverb this week are from? Uh, proverb this week are from the Republic of Zigambia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. He who sleeps on a borrowed mat is sleeping on a cold, comma, very cold ground. He who sleeps on a borrowed mat is sleeping on a very cold, on a cold, very cold ground. Yes. What's the interpretation of this one, Mr. Murege? I think this is very linked to what we're going to speak here today. Mm. I think it means you should not live on borrowed resources. Try to create your own resources. That's the top of mind that comes to it. Makes sense. Ndu? Mm. Does it resonate? It does. Build your own. Create your create own. Create your own. Grow your own. Okay. When you talk about investing for growth, again, people just say investing for growth. Yeah, can you else am I investing? <laughs> Surely. <laughs> Define those two terms, investing and growth, and why they come together. Very well. So investing is basically putting into action your surplus. So ideally... We get an income, we spend it. If you spend more than you earn, you will be, in the proverb, borrowing from someone else. Mm -hmm. So we want to encourage people to be basically savers, mm -hmm. to have a surplus. Once you have the surplus, you can deploy it into a saving, into an investment. Now, the function of whether it's going to be a growth investment or not is a function of time in the market, a function of how long uh, you're persevering into that, and a function of discipline. So there are no shortcuts on that. Unfortunately, we want to have growth today mm -hmm. on the first day of job without even putting time in. So I think that's what we have to discuss and unpack today. Are you saying that not all investments end up in growth? Not all of them, okay? And I think it's good to find that uh, investments sometimes do go down. Uh, because economic cycles change, fundamentals change. Uh, we remember the Kodak moment, okay? Yeah. Many companies are going through that right now with the kind of disruptions we are seeing globally. So not all investments, as well planned as they were, do pan out. But that's why we say your planning journey, your investment journey should focus on diversification. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. And that's what we're going to discuss along this investment growth journey. I'm sure we'll ask you about the baskets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How, how many baskets are out there and how do you identify the ones that are good? And how do you know where to put eggs in? Hmm. So, what everybody... Do where do you get the eggs? For <laughs> <laughs> huh? And where do you get the baskets? Yeah. I mean, they are all these fundamental questions. So, first, once you've so got... the a basket on egg situation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which one comes first? The baskets uh, or the eggs? Egg. Yes. Mm. Very good. So, I think... Uh, or rather the hen, which one comes before. Hmm. So I think first uh, you get to get the eggs, mm -hmm. which is your surplus, okay? You have to have the financial discipline to live within your means, okay? And that way you're able to save something extra. That extra is what we call the surplus. Now, how do you deploy it? And I'll be showing you how one of the easiest steps to start with is a money market fund. It's very basic. It's a, I can say it's the ele elementary level mm. of investments because you're hiring a professional fund manager to manage your money, however little it is. And we want to clarify here, there's no little amount of saving. So for our Stanbic Money Market Fund, we start as low as 1,000 shillings. And for the fixed income fund, which is a US dollar fund, as low as $100. We are the lowest in the market, I believe. Okay? Mm. So for $100, you're exposed to dollar-denominated assets, we know the impact, the depreciation of the shilling had the last two years. It's still alive to us. We came very close until February this year, and uh, we dodged that bullet. But does it mean we're out of the woods? Not necessarily, because we still don't have a budget for 2024, uh, which was rescinded, and definitely uh, there are more obligations to settle. That's it and done. How do we diversify? So 
one way to diversify as an entry level money market fund you put your 1000 shillings with us you get a plethora of investments from fixed deposits to call deposits to treasury bills treasury bonds if you want but ideally we don't put treasury bonds in money market funds per se those would be in a fixed income fund mm -hmm. in the pure sense of a money market fund it should be short term below maybe six months at most okay so anything above one year in investments that would be a fixed income fund and we give you the whole package the whole suite so don't just put your money all in one bank bank can go down so in a money market fund you've got a bit of t-bills you've got a bit of deposits with various banks and that diversifies your portfolio and that comes to the nuance of saying don't put all your eggs in one basket mm -hmm. so you're saying the money market fund is like the elementary level of uh, investing for growth it's like the pink piggy bank the one for kiddies you just look at it and you know you just put the money here and there's you, the basics you can understand put money and you can get the money out absolutely okay but explain how does a money market fund work so a money market fund is part of what we call a collective investment scheme these are regulated products by the capital markets authority and i can confirm that our standbig unit trusts are regulated and licensed by the capital markets authority mm. highly regulated uh, there are principles on how this should be managed and we apply those principles and internally we have an investment philosophy where our underpinning theory should be we need to preserve capital okay just to point out what you said earlier some investments do go south mm. but ours we are saying come rain come shine we want to preserve capital then from there we can tackle at least a decent return that's above inflation mm -hmm. and that way we protect wealth remember inflation is the enemy okay in any situation if you had money and just put it under the mattress next year that same bunch of money might not buy the same goods because of inflation and that's just the way the capitalist system is wired and maybe even the agrarian system because goods do go up okay seasons cyclicalities do change production and prices of commodities go up so how do you defend yourself to be able at a bare minimum afford the same cluster of goods that you are affording this year without having to dig deeper into your savings. So investing is a one sure way to beat inflation and a money market fund for ideal and entry level uh, investors, also nuanced investors who want to get an income that they can live off, can also use this product, it's very versatile. Uh, that's what I can use. It's a linchpin to other investment areas like equities or to offshore investments or even to buying a home. You can actually start saving through a money market fund so that should actually set the tone on that hmm. you talk about i think one of the first things that you said was uh, take what you have in terms of a surplus um no matter how much it is okay. so is that saying that you can only invest when you do have a surplus absolutely you uh, should only invest if you have a surplus. not really uh, we have situations where you can borrow it's called leverage mm -hmm. okay and uh, this we find it more uh, in the area of equities, shares, commodities, where you have maybe a shilling and you borrow another 10 shillings. So you leverage your position and that's speculation now, mm. okay? Because the challenge and the benefit of leverage, it can amplify your profits. And on the flip side, it can double or even magnify your losses mm. by the same amount you leverage. Because when you borrow, you must pay what? You must, you must pay. pay interest yep. and, the cap and the principal. Okay, so ideally, it should be best you have something of your own. Okay, just like we say, when you take a mortgage, you should have at least your own 20% and borrow the 80%. If you borrow the whole 100% of what we're seeing banks giving 105, it's good enough when you're getting in, but it becomes a challenge when you have to start servicing it because you're borrowing more than the value of your collateral. So, ideally, have something of your own, then leverage the balance. L let me ask this question. When you talk about saving, you talk about investment. As Stanbeck, I am one of your clients, by the way, just so that you know. Ah, thank you, Charles. Yes. Uh, what is the policy that you have on ensuring that this message gets to people when A, they haven't at least started earning, B, they haven't at least started getting responsibilities, so that they actually get into the habit of A, putting money aside, Mm -hmm. And so the issue of investment becomes a lot easier because once they get into a cycle where they now have a fixed way in which they go about managing their funds, it then becomes a little difficult to engage the reverse gear. Absolutely. Absolutely. How we tackle this, 
Uh, Stanbic Bank is part of the Standard Bank Group. That's the biggest banking group in Africa. I don't know if you knew that, and we're part of it. <laughs> One of our pillars is to drive sustainable growth, okay? And under that pillar in Kenya and actually across Africa, we have a mechanism, a channel called Financial Fitness Academy. Now, that Financial Fitness Academy is a training uh, platform. We engage individuals, we engage SMEs, we engage groups, and train them on how fast to plan how their money is went, spent. Number two, how to budget. There's a 50, 30, 20 rule. I'll speak about it a bit later. And definitely how to invest, how to start, how to manage your debt, how to get involved in creating wealth, the journey. And uh, that academy is free. We don't charge for it. And so far in the year 2024, we've impacted 5, 000, over 5,500 uh, learners or trained people who now we do believe are in a better position to manage their money. So to start with, uh, we're starting to, we've been doing this with uh, universities, okay, from year one to year four as they finish, so that by the time they get their first paycheck, they're very alive to how they will manage that money, okay? Not just the sherehe and daughter view, mm. but they know they now start planning for their retirement on the first day that they actually get employed. We're now cascading that to uh, high schools and maybe even younger kids from 10, we are packages for various ages just to inculcate the discipline of saving one of the challenges we have as a country we have a very low uh, gross savings rate to gdp i think it's about 10.7 just under 11 percent globally more developed countries are running almost close to 30 between 26 and 30 percent that way a country is able to invest in, in its own development without having to rely on borrowed capital so i think we need to have that discussion and i know the national government is very alive to that fact mm. to inculcate the financial literacy program there's something i think being worked with the uh, kenya institute of career curriculum development as, as a government front and we want to partner with like-minded uh, institutions to inculcate this culture all the way starting from our cbc learners now so that by the time in 20 years they are earning their first income they know exactly what to do on day one invest in a money market fund if you have no other idea of where to spend your money. Mm. What does your money do when it gets into this fund? So what happens when the money comes, as, as I said, a collective investment scheme, mm. as the name suggests, is collective. You can think of it as a charmer. So all of us who want a money market fund, which is the elementary basic entry level of investments, low risk, low risk, not no risk, huh? low risk, because I did say all investments can go down, okay? Mm. Institutions go down. Haven't we seen that? Mm. So we say low risk because they ideally invest in shorter dated uh, instruments. So we get a thousand customers, two thousand customers, everybody uh, putting in money today, some taking out tomorrow, new people joining it. So what we call an open ended uh, collective investment scheme. Mm. Once that is put into place, there's a document called an investment policy statement. It's a guiding uh, principle, it's our North Star. So that document says where we can invest, up to what limit, and what kind of risk we can accept mm -hmm. for the best risk adjusted return. So we do that, and the investors who have contributed from the 1,000 shillings, we'll have a customer bringing 5 million, another 10 million, all of you are called unit holders. For every shilling that you put into that pot, you get one unit of that money market fund, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's distributed that way. That money return is invested by a professional manager, and that's how we come in, myself and my team. We do go there, we've done research, we are see which risk we can accept for the given level of return. Mm -hmm. And then every day, a return is generated and credited to our unit holders' daily. accounts daily, okay? okay? So last night, if you had joined our money market fund, uh, Latif, mm. and I hope I'll get your account today, mm. by the time you <laughs> get tomorrow, mm. you'll have an interest. How does that work now? At the end of the month, we credit Latif's account, we credit Ndu's account with the income that has been earned. Now, here is the magic. If you do not take out your interest, that becomes the opening balance for the following month plus your original principal. Yeah. Now you start earning interest on your interest mm. and principal, and that's the power of compounding. So that's how we create wealth and how you grow your wealth. The power of compounding is a magic formula, and that's what we want to encourage people to understand it. Mm. For example, in a, how, how do you um, report your interests? So what do you say, like 13% per annum, 12% per annum, is that what you say, or do you say interest per day? So the interest, is annualized right so you make so you can compare apples for apples so if someone is saying it'll give you 10 percent per annum we have to give a 
equivalent return mm. so it's annualized so there's a mathematical formula that gives you the equivalent of how it would have been per annum give us an example of the current money market fund for example for sunbeak and the interest per annum very well so currently our interest rates for annualized rates are about 14.48 percent mm -hmm. we sit right around the middle of the pack and as i said we are a pure money market fund no shenanigans we have short-term instruments our average maturity period of our portfolio is slightly under three months okay mm. so if i said uh, we want to close shop today all my money should have come back in without doing months. anything in three months okay the weighted average maturity mm. okay the regulator allows us up to 18 months but in essence we've taken as a house because we have a global a global reach we have to apply group standards across all our markets we do take about maximum 4 months depending on the markets that they are allowed okay mm. so our competitors might be a bit higher than that therefore they might have a higher maybe kind of return at the top mm. but ideally markets do change and they're fickle and if you know the last 2 years what has happened on interest rates on treasury bonds and bills so if you're invested in those instruments in a money market fund for the last two years you've really gotten a uh a beating like a win, okay yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's mm -hmm. a beating because mm. there's something called interest rate risk mm. when a similar instrument that you bought two years ago earning 10 percent and now the new one is earning 15 percent which one would you prefer for the well, same maturity mm. they want you okay yeah so almost all portfolios and that's a uh, across the board mm. uh, if you look at even the banking results for last year when they compare year on year you'll see something called revaluation losses on those bond portfolios so that also trickles down if you have pushed those kind of instruments in a money market fund you can imagine mm. and the basic tenet of a money market fund a shilling should be cost to a unit we call it not breaking the back okay. so your shilling you brought should still come out at the very worst mm. okay and i do believe investors out there as much as we chase return i think you have seen many of them you give someone to double your money and it gets lost mm. they don't care about the interest they forwent mm -mm. what do they want the money principal. back the amount back even mm. if it's one year i gave you people, a thousand bob exactly oh, yeah. so people are not really <clears throat> when things go bad i just want my principal mm. and that's our ethos we want to protect the principal and give you a decent return above inflation so based on that so the 14 percent for example yeah. the money market fund for some big is at 14 percent 14.48 14.48 yes when you credit my account on a daily basis mm -hmm. how do you calculate that so that 14.48 will be divided by 365 days and that portion is put into your account so by the time we come at the end of the month you'll have 14.48 divided by 12. i see to get to one month okay so if i withdraw my money before yep. the end of the year okay i'll have and the 14.4 divided by the number of months. 365 days by the number of days you've been in the game so the longer i stay the better for me the more time you spend in the market the better and i did say it's a very versatile product it could be for you can open for your kid you can open if you're a retiree you can use it even for your retirement income 14 mm. percent is a decent income so you have some five million somewhere as opposed to keeping it maybe for example what we have seen a very big uh, trajectory towards government bonds and t-bills remember those ones you have to sell but for a money market fund the moment you face a challenge and you need to liquidate your investment within 48 hours we have paid you for a bond you must look for a stock broker out there to start telling you they'll get your buyer it might take long especially if you're what we call odd lots ideally markets trade instruments of 100 million mm. that's a minimum ticket size to buy, sell a bond and you'll see a lot of activity will be between fund managers banks banks and insurance but a retail investor with a 50000 shillings to put the same order it might take 2 weeks but why don't you get the same similar return in a money market fund and your cash in 2 days mm. it makes that sense it's a very liquid very low risk and low entry level is there a minimum tenure within which within which you must hold the fund absolutely none okay okay you so then based in, on that there's yeah. no penalty for cashing out there is no penalty for cashing out and okay. that's the allure of these uh, instruments okay 1000 shillings i've got in monday have a challenge i can request it i'll have earned my three days interest it mm. won't be frame breaking mm. but it will be there whatever it was at least 1000 will be there it will be there right. plus it, and then at the end of the month you will see your statement and the interest for the number of days that you have held will be there okay okay do you observe and see the number of people for example who have uh, current accounts with sunbeak uh -huh. and they're keeping money there uh -huh. and of course then they're thinking the money is staying in the bank it's uh -huh. safe i'm not using it i'm going to use it later uh -huh. but they're putting it in that current account uh -huh. would you advise such a person to move it into a money market fund so 
money market fund is just one of the instruments that you got to have okay mm -hmm. you can have a savings as deposit you can have a tbl in cbk and the dow system and you can have a current account the reason people have current accounts and most importantly will be to make their main, mainly their check obligations yeah. i don't know if people still write checks but those are the purposes <laughs> for current accounts yes we do we still write yeah. thank you charles <laughs> <laughs> there was a story yesterday that actually yeah. the number of checks written uh -huh. has drastically dropped Drops. yes mm -hmm. because of online banking you mm -hmm. can wire instantly and there's special link and not a view mm -hmm. so current accounts have their purpose okay and i want to believe our customers are enlightened they know about our products no so, no 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 yeah. no no no, no, no. <laughs> yes somebody who yes they have all these obligations Correct. and they want to be to keep doing it oh. but they've kept this money in a current account for 60 days mm -hmm. is that advisable is it advisable yes that is not a very wise financial decision mm. because it could be earning something you could be putting it somewhere else correct it could be earning something better because a savings account also earns you money mm. but yeah. a current earns you none current earns or they are interest earning current account yes some mm -hmm. some yes. of the practice yeah. they yes. meant to be 0% yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's free money usually okay. it's usually just cash there just cash which the bank can play with it overnight <laughs> right, right, right. 50 30 20 rule what's that thanks eric uh, so that's the guiding principle you don't have to apply it mm. absolutely but it's just a guiding principle and it starts from the aspect where you have to look at yourself individually mm. and look at what are your sources of revenue what is your source of income is it employment is it tenant uh, tenants paying you money is it a side hustle what have you whatever business so that we call the inflow okay mm. now at any one time you want to make sure the outflow the small tap the tap is smaller like just in your normal tank at home mm. the feeder pipe is big but the tap is smaller mm. that way the tank is always almost full mm. okay and that's what we talk about the surplus so today i think we can focus on how to manage the outflow mm. how where we spend our money mm. and that is called budgeting and i did say our financial fitness academy uh, which is run by my colleague called uh, king origa mm. it is actually a very instrumental educational platform on literacy where we can actually teach uh, the attendants how to manage their money one of the things we do about budgeting is first we have to ask you where are you spending your money do you keep receipts of where you spend your money so as a starter mm -hmm. i think latif start mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. whatever you spend on friday you're, you're keep you're that receipt headache <laughs> <laughs> receipt yeah, keep whatever expenses <laughs> no what is the good thing we have mpesa right. to show you where you have spent your money i don't want to look at those things <laughs> <my friend. laughs> but it is a discussion you love to face why why is it important it is important you? because uh, latif uh, our expenses are categorized in two or three broad areas mm. the first we pay for our needs okay you can't do without it yeah. you, you gotta put food on the table mm. you gotta take your kids to school isn't it mm. uh you gotta do buy medicine get health care if you don't have okay yeah uh, put a roof over your head then we have a second category called wants mm. wants are things that we do for lifestyle okay so if you take a I wouldn't mention brands but if you if you like a favorite coffee before you come to the office in the morning from a particular uh, outlet mm. as opposed to making it from your house that's not that's really a want. that's a want isn't mm. it you could have done it at home you can get your coffee grind and whatever you make your own coffee or rather even buying lunch that's a want mm. you can pack lunch from home just like giving examples and then finally there's an the issue of saving mm. okay so the 50 percent means i from my net earnings after taxes yeah I should not spend more than 50% of my net earnings on needs. That should cover everything, school fees, what have you. Okay? Then the next 30%, and this is where we say the green area, depending mm. on your personality, those are the needs. Okay? I mean, those are the ones. Mm. So the 50% are the needs, 30% are the ones, and then strive at any one time. However little it is, put 20 aside, 20% aside, okay? Or whatever you put. Yeah. And I'll come to that. So depending on where you are on your mm. lifetime mm. Uh, earning cycle mm. you could reduce your wants and increase exactly. on how much you're locating on your savings and investment mm. okay uh, i can see muga looking at me i just want to show him that in the asian markets they save as much as 60 percent of their after tax eh. income 60 percent and, and i'm just talking about 20 percent but also <laughs> so that's the guiding principle latif now 
the needs are impacted by very many things right so need you need to pay school fees oh. um for many people because of the school that you want your children to go to mm. then it also impacts where you want to live okay you live there because you want to be closer to this particular school that you prefer for your children okay mm. so the, it's all those things are adding up you learn the finding that if you want your children to be here and you're paying this amount of school fees mm. and this is the kind of rent that then you must pay mm. And then this is a kind of uh, the kind of bills that then you'll end up having. This is where you work, and so you need a vehicle. You need to fuel your vehicle. I know this fifty percent will not cut it. Thank you. So you me. find that many people are doing eighty percent on need, twenty percent on sherehe, saving. To the mungu atas to save. So I think uh, <laughs> one item you've actually pointed there: mm. education is important. Yeah, we are especially our middle class in urban areas we are held captive by the so called buji schools yeah okay yeah so because of that also it in, it takes you to a buji area to be closer to the school and you find out easily that 50% is going away but uh, let me throw it back to you uh, what happens to the kids who come from far flung areas i think we have kids from marsabit uh, turkana lodwa in the university of nairobi they still made it there so i think uh, my guiding principle let's not be held hostage by the concept that the higher the more pricier the private school is a direct correlation to success in life in most instances it's not character metal is developed from hardship actually and you'll see look at your crop of politicians yeah, those ones like half of them i think are from hardship areas are very few are from buji i just mentioned just top of mind even uh, corporate leaders in business so there's no direct correlation it is good and i think from where i stand it's a bit of what we call having what the joneses have okay looking peering over to the neighbor because he's going to xyz school i must measure up and that's i think one of the fallacies so that, that stops being a need and becomes a want so the gray there's a it's a very gray line there gray between line. but is it need a lifestyle want. issue I think. is it really a lifestyle issue because uh, how then do you decide that when a parent wants the best for their child is a lifestyle issue mm. Because it become it could be coming from that hardship that you speak of, and you say, well, you know what the parents went through, they don't want their child to go through, and so they will make sure that they have the best. The point is this: if your income does not allow you to go to that private school and you're borrowing mm. to even stick to that school, what happens the moment uh, you lose your job, you lose the source of income, you get unwell? We saw that in COVID, yeah. and I think we should not lose sight of that. Yeah. A lot of parents did realize that they cannot sustain that false promise, and they did take. School their kids to lower schools many uh, government schools actually you ended up getting kids enrollment. from private schools yep. i sit on a board <coughs> of a public school one of the biggest public school primary schools and our entry level has been abnormally high till today people are still bringing kids from private schools into the academy every day i sit on the board of a school called ololwa primary school in kajiado and definitely we see those numbers every day you Now, see the what you're saying is true but what we're dealing with here is the aspirations that parents have yes and to meet those aspirations many parents go beyond their means to achieve those absolutely it's a simple reality it's absolutely and and when you say borrowing many parents plan save in a sacco planning mm. they borrow once a year they pay then they spend a good portion that year repaying back So yes covid was a calamity it is not the norm it's not it's something that happens once in a while but the effects are still with us mm. i'm simply saying that everything you say is absolutely true and it's something that one must aspire to mm. but the moment you touch on education or then the moment you start touching on healthcare it will break that budget in this country it's the reality of um the economy and the, the country that you're living in yes. in some of those asian countries that you're talking about some of these things have been taken care of right they are state funded there's a proper social protection program that runs school just let your kid get out go to that school that school is as good as the school in the next neighborhood right uh healthcare you're sorted because your tax and you're talking about net uh kia coming to 50 30 20 it's net what was taken by tax has sorted out your healthcare has sorted out your school 
has sorted out very many things even in the neighborhood that you live in and uh, the kind of at atmosphere that you have then now you're left to deal with the needs what are the other needs that you have oh rent this this and the other it reduces the needs but here our needs <laughs> even garbage <laughs> falls in this category of need watchman mm -hmm. need, need. You know something what yeah? <laughs> need something as, 50%. as a, something as simple Christian. and as straightforward as just even food for instance yeah? if you look at countries like Malaysia and what have you and you look at the policies mm -hmm. the government has and how they go about producing their food it is extremely inexpensive to eat in those country it is not expensive at all in fact you get shocked at what food costs absolutely see so again it is possible what you're saying is something that ordinarily would be ideal, but what rocks this particular boat is, to begin with, how the government manages the money that they already collect from us in taxes. Because that is what is supposed to have given us the foundation on which Absolutely. what you're saying then becomes very simple and very easy. Absolutely. I agree with you, Muga. I will not uh, purport to speak on behalf of government and how they uh, they use their taxes. Mm. You're going to leave that one to okay. us. <laughs> <laughs> you do a very good job on that. Yes. But I think the social safety, uh, safety nets, the social systems like education and health do actually come from that angle where mm. the taxes we pay are pulled together and the governments of the day can invest in education, uh, which is affordable. I went to a private, uh, public school in my days mm. and it turned out well, I, I think so. Okay. Well, most of you actually, I believe so. We mm. did go to public school. Exactly. Yep. exactly. Mm. So what has happened, I think we've had a population explosion of late. But but our investment in infrastructure, our investment in education, our investment in healthcare has not been at the same pace. I think in the 80s, we had a population of something to the tune of about 25 million or so, maybe mm. 30. Yes. We're now almost touching 60. I think when you do the next census, we'll be above 55 going to 60. Yes. But has the infrastructure changed? You can see the kilometers of roads are still the same, though the cars have increased. So even to the primary schools, and especially on account of the FPE, when the FPE came through, we saw the public schools inundated and truth be told quality went down yep. teacher to student ratios went up and that's why we saw a mushrooming of private schools okay from that time especially secondary schools and our primary schools so there is that actually need because you want the best for your, ki your kid you don't mm. want a teacher student ratio of uh, 1 to 100 1 to 20 yeah you want something like 1 to 40 those are called the ideals and for that you got a pair that I agree, okay? So you can take the circle loans and actually most of the circle loans end up paying school fees because private tuition is not cheap. Mm. But even with private tuition, you can get your price point, okay? And you can live around the price point. Mm -hmm. Till today, I think that people who come as, way, as far away as from Machakos because maybe their family lives there, there are good schools in Machakos and he commutes to Nairobi and back to, Nero back to Machakos mm -hmm. at the end of the evening, a distance of about 60 kilometers. I know people who come from Naivasha come to Nairobi work and go back to Naivasha the same day mm -hmm. because it's cheaper there, their family is there, maybe they have another business there and he's the only one coming and going back even by public means. Yeah. So it's a way how you look at your situation Stop looking through the fence about the so Joneses. So deal with your deal own everybody, reality. Mm. Everybody, <coughs> Latif is the reality. Mm. You are running your own race. Yes. Mm. You are not running Do's race. Yeah. You are not running Muga's race. Okay. So look at yourself, introspect yourself, and say, what is a need here? What is a want? And how much can I put aside? A key issue, even as we do about planning, there's only one angle. Retirement is a real, real issue here in country. Mm. I think uh, the income replacement ratio, one of the measures we use to see how well people will retire, we have one of the lowest. Internationally, best prescribed, and I know Charles might have a comment on this, they say you should have actually, seven. you should have 70% of your last uh, income level, okay? So if you're on 100k, try to retire, and your nest egg should be giving at least 70k to continue oh, the lives. If you're on 100k, if your last uh, salary was 100k at the time you're hitting 60 or whatever retirement age, you should have accumulated 70% of that in an annual basis, okay? Mm. So that you can continue the lifestyle that you are enjoying. Mm. Short of that, you become a dependent. And some of us do not have dependents. Or some of us even, the dependents are still depending on you. Yep. And it continues a vicious cycle. So you find very many people who are, whilst in, in employment, they are okay living in a good standard of living, but after retirement, you see dwindling down. Affording mm. a panadol becomes an issue. Healthcare, as we have said, is not keeping 
pace with the growth in population. So your one your panadol which you are getting free from your dispensary a few now years costing. ago. Today it's costing you. Yeah. It's out of pocket. Okay? And that's reality. Uh, you go for an operation, it's be much more expensive next year or ten years from now than it is today. Mm. Until now we sort this issue of the healthcare and you can see what's happening uh, with this new proposal that came into effect first. I don't know and I don't hold photo That's of that. Not deal. But so ideally Christian, course will continue going up. At at Stambik, like you're saying, yes. you have you know this academy and uh, you the said National Fitness Academy. Mr. Kingori is there to, to teach people yes. to get people to have this twenty percent so then the twenty percent people can come to you. Correct. And you show them how do we now use these savings of yours oh into investment into growth Correct. okay yeah. what are the challenges that um, you two face when you're dealing with customers yeah. is it very is it so easy to convert people into actually going into the 20 percent into getting the 20 percent and the discipline of it what what are the hindrances to this what are the barriers i think some of the barriers you have actually just come out now people say the cost of living is too high i can't mm. manage this i can't manage that but i did say at uh, the first point is to look introspectively and see how much you're spending per month. Nobody likes to look at that uh, message, okay? Yeah. But once you realize there's some things you spend on the sherehe, can I reduce it now to once a week or instead of daily? Kenyans are daily sherehe people, <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just go to mm. the outlets. Yeah. Maybe change it from maybe to Friday once or something. Mm. That's how either you can save that 2K or whatever it is. Mm. Put it aside. And you'll notice it starts snowballing. It starts building up. And the good thing about putting something aside is that however small it is, it could be 500, 1,000 shillings, the moment you see it building up, it motivates you to put more. Just like when you're paying debt, one of our lessons on how to reduce debt is a method called snowballing. People have borrowed for lizard here, they have done things, they have taken a Shylock, they have circled everything. We tell them, start our running call as asset management is financial freedom is possible, <laughs> but you cannot be financially free if you have a, the yoke of debt choking you every day. Mm -hmm. So how do you get rid of this yoke? One of the ways we say is snowballing debt payment. So tackle the smallest debt that you have, okay? Once you have tackled that one, the one for you, Akashailok or Mama Maliza kiosk, yoke. you have motivation mm -hmm. to pay the next one, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? You knock that one out. Then you go to the bigger one. And slowly, whatever you have saved from those ones by reducing that cash flow, you can actually start now paying down your bigger ones. Mm -hmm. For example, your mortgage, okay? There's a standard that comes out of your month, but did you know that you can look at your contract of your mortgage when it's debited? On that material day, if you add money to the principal account, it reduces your principal and automatically resets the calculation of the remaining interest to retirement. Okay? Mm. That's one way. So you can put this money in your money market fund. Your bank debits your principal account on the 30th. So pull your money out on the 29th. I give you back. And on the 30th, you pay down your principal amount. Now, principal amount is okay to pay. But if you look at a typical mortgage, and I wonder how people survive with mortgages of 20% currently in the current what? scenario, a mm. loan of 10 million will easily end up paying easily 50 million over mm -hmm. a, a period of 20, 30 years. Yeah. 50 million. Mm. 40 of that is interest, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because your principal is still the 10. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to pay down your interest, your principal so that you let you pay less of the 40. You reduce the, the interest. Time. You get a windfall, your hustle, reduce the principal on that particular day because for the months already calculated. Mm. So those are the kind of tips we give. And I can see Ndu is taking notes. Of course. I uh, think you'll uh, send me a check for that. Don't, don't even worry. <laughs> yes, so yes. then how do you say you're getting to the point, um, Christian, when you're creating wealth? So wealth starts from savings. We've budgeted, isn't it? We've got the surplus. Yeah. You save. Mm. So now you invest. After saving, you invest. Okay. So what is your goal for investment? Okay. You want to generate things we call passive income, depending on your stage of life, mm. or growth income. Okay, so when you have a money market fund, depending, like let's say you're 25 years old, straight from university, you have no business building apartments, you should be growing your money for retirement, more aggressive investments. Okay, uh, you can see what has changed the last 10 years. For example, if you're in those stocks like Nvidia in the US, <laughs> those that have disrupted the markets, you invest in the themes that are emerging. Right now, artificial intelligence is a theme, it will stay there for intermediate time. Some companies will be disrupted totally, okay? Equity funds are very nice for a person who's younger, mm. okay? So I'd advise if you're a young person, 25 in university right now, start investing in a money market fund and then take advantage of equity funds, okay? Locally and abroad, okay? That way you get your money increasing at a faster pace, okay? A, a case in point, NVIDIA just this year, I think has done over 200%. Over the last three years, I think has been done 10 times. You've 10 times your money. So. The power of stock markets is that 
okay mm -hmm. i know some of our youth prefer the cryptos mm. but cryptos i think in as much as they've had good times <laughs> sometimes those are speculative because and, and the forex, substance for trading and for trading mm. the substance underpinning it is not really here nor there an ideal investment should have a cash flow mm. and you'll tell me maybe gold does not have a cash flow but gold is perceived as a safe store of, of wealth. wealth okay but ideally your best investment should give you a regular cash flow and that's how we evaluate that investment and see the price so you look at the cash flows we do something called discounting mm. and get the present value and see what will this stock be in five years time ten years time how do they fare in the market are they market leaders do they have a moat around their business is it easy to enter those kind of dynamics so in, stock kenya, in kenya when people think investment shaba mm. precisely mm. so that is direct challenge to everything mm. that you're saying very good how do you get people to understand Shabba. soil is wealth buana kabisa <laughs> soil is wealth you are speaking to the converter mm. okay come goda yes <laughs> how do you get people to understand this yes, yes it is but what you are offering mm. is just as real mm. as the shambas yes Very and it, your money is more accessible Very with what you are suggesting than with that piece of earth that you've acquired. Very good. Yes. So the issue about there's no issue about property. Property is actually a very good store of wealth as well, especially if it's in the right area. Okay. We do see a flurry of uh, plots being sold. I think from the 2015s all over mm. in the peripheries, Everywhere where nothing Kenya. really much will ha uh, happen, and people have actually bought those one eight somewhere as far as Busia, somewhere near the border, not near the the road, but in Tanga. Mm. And you wonder what will happen to those ones. Why won't you? instead invest in what we call real estate investment trusts okay they invest in an underlying basket of properties and they're tradable and easily convertible to cash remember your investment should not be a dead asset mm. when you need it back it should come back to you so it's very hard to sell some of those plots i can see some of them have been in the market for years especially if they're small and they're not strategically placed mm. but a real estate investment trust and there are two or three in the market listed you actually get an underlying asset that is investing in properties and you get a cash flow and you can actually sell it and get a price discovery because mm. you can get a buyer very liquid so on that point i do agree uh, muga property has been one of the key pillars people have put for for investing okay but i think i'll challenge you also I'll look at uh, the papers on every is it mondays on the back Options. pages they are very f that, very hard to liquidate someone is asking how do they come and talk to you Thank you very much Latif. So that's all bringing this towards at least the end. If you're a star big customer, it's as easy as dialing star 208 hash. I repeat, star 208 hash. You go to option number 9. It will say stand big unit trusts. Mm -hmm. Select number 9. It will then tell you to accept our terms and conditions. You say yes and then to ask you about data privacy. If you're a customer where you have your data, we won't be asking anything else from you. Your mm. ID, your KRP, we already have that. Mm. So it automatically picks from our core system. Then from there it guides you to choose a fund. Do you want a money market fund? Do you want a fixed income dollar fund? Okay? So if you want the dollar fund, you must have at least a dollar savings with the Standard Bank. Mm. And if you're not a customer of the bank, we encourage you to visit your nearest branch. You can actually open an account online but have the documents that they require and your account will be opened and within a few hours it will be active and you can now start dialing on start 208 hash it's as simple as that we have made it very affordable a thousand shillings for the standbeek money market fund a hundred dollars only to join the standbeek fixed income fund and from there you started your investment journey it's a linchpin you can now explore the other options that we're going to bring on board we have a pipeline of very good investment solutions mm. our capability we have offshore solutions uh, we have private wealth solutions and we are happy to get as much as possible through your partnership with Spice FM and our listeners today thank you very much eric thank, thank you christian christian murege is the head of asset management at stanbic bank kenya he's been our guest this is the situation room the only way to start your day